subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 17th of August. Massive protest erupted in India's Jammu and Kashmir over targeted killing of Kashmiri pundit. Flood affected families in Balochistan wait for relief death toll reaches 200. And Sri Lanka to end state of emergency says president Ranil Wickremesinghe. And now for all the details. Massive protests erupted in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory on Wednesday a day after a Kashmiri pundit was shot dead in Shopian district in a targeted attack claimed by an offshoot of Pakistan based Lashkar-e-Taiba terror outfit. Nearly 2 dozen civilians mainly members of the region's minority Hindu community have lost their lives in targeted terror attacks in Kashmir Valley this year. Massive protests erupted in Jammu city of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory on Wednesday a day after the targeted killing of a Kashmiri pandit in Shopian district claimed by Kashmir freedom fighters in offshoot of Pakistan based Lashkar-e-Taiba terror group. The protesters including migrant Kashmiri pandit government employees raised slogans against Pakistan and demanded relocation and protection for Hindus in the Kashmir valley from the Indian government they said they have become soft targets for the terrorists a separate protest was also held by opposition congress party workers in the city calling for resignation of interior minister amit shah over the issue Nearly 2 dozen people mainly from the region's minority Hindu community and non-locals have been killed in attacks by terrorists in the Kashmir Valley this year. Okay targeting ke liye ja rahi hai minorities ki killing ho rahi hai government sarkar Jammu Kashmir ka prashasan LG saab DG saab jo bayan yahan pe dete hain hame ab lip service nahi chahiye unke asli jumle wali bayan bazi nahi chahiye ground pe action chahiye The targeted killing in Shopian was followed by a grenade attack by terrorists on security forces during a cordon and search operation in the district. The terrorists managed to escape. However, there were no casualties. India has long blamed Pakistan trains and infiltrates terrorists across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Islamabad, however, denies the charge. Heavy and incessant rainfall over the past few days has caused a flood-like situation in several states of India, throwing life out of gear. In Odisha, the heavy rainfall has inundated low-lying areas and sent several rivers into spilt, while several waterlogging has disrupted the movement of residents and deprived them of food and electricity in western Gujarat state. Heavy rainfall in recent days has led to flood-like situation in several districts of India's western Gujarat state. Several areas of Gujarat's Surat city were inundated due to heavy rains on Wednesday. Some locals were seen residing in containers with their children while waiting for the government to provide relief aid. They said they have been deprived of food and other resources which has added to their woes. India's weather office has issued an orange alert in 8 districts. and a yellow alert in seven districts of Gujarat on Wednesday as a result of the intense rain that has pounded the western state dar saal mein pani aa raha hai to hum har ghar mein jaate to tab sab ko takleef ho raha hai to iske liye set maare ab double pe reh reh fir bhi hum logon ko takleef ho raha hai khane ka takleef ho raha hai musibat sab kuch western maharashtra state is also reeling under a flood like situation due to heavy rainfall in recent days Bhandara city has come as a double edged sword as it has left victims with power outages and a grappling shortage of essentials while their houses remain inundated in muddy waters din bhar barish ho rahi thi uske karan nadi ka pravah badh gaya hai flow bahut hai bahut sare gharon mein pani ghus gaya hai idhar har bar pani ghusta hai lekin prashasan purna rasan nahi kar raha hai bahut bahut jan ke ghar mein pani gaya hai unka saman bhi bahaya gaya hai In eastern Odisha state heavy downpour and subsequent flood has brought the normal life to stand still. Residential areas in Bhadrak city were inundated due to swelling of the Baitarani river. 
Odisha's Chief Minister Navin Patnaik on Tuesday reviewed the flood situation in the state and directed the officials to ensure zero casualty due to flood and that there should be no disruption to normal life. He also directed officials to evacuate people in the risk-prone areas on a priority basis and provide them with necessary relief and basic facilities. More news from India. India on Wednesday recorded a total of 9,062 new COVID-19 infections, taking the active case load to 105,058. While daily fresh infections remain below the 10,000 mark, positivity rate in capital New Delhi increased to 19.20%, the highest in seven months. New Delhi currently has 6,867 active cases. This comes after the Delhi government on August 11 once again made face mask mandatory in all public places after the city recorded more than 2,000 cases for the 12 consecutive days. Delhi's Lieutenant Governor VK Saxena on Tuesday raised concern the pandemic is far from over and appealed to people to adhere to COVID-appropriate behaviour. A senior doctor at Delhi's LNJP hospital said most of the admitted patients are those who have taken just one or two doses of the vaccine. He emphasized on the need to get the precautionary dose. If you are fully vaccinated with three doses, it protects you for further hospitalization. And the virus, even if you infect an individual or human being, it just gets cleared with just sore throat or minimal or mild illness. A news from Pakistan. Pakistan's finance minister Mifta Ismail has defended his move to hike fuel prices once again despite widespread criticism from ruling PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif and coalition government ally PPP. He said he has saved the country from default and efforts to put the economy back on track are on full swing. Pakistan's Finance Minister Mifta Ismail on Tuesday defended his decision of fuel price hike amid criticism from ruling PMLN leaders and coalition ally PPP. The government jacked up the price of petrol by Rs 6.72 per litre from Tuesday for the next fortnight, taking it to Rs 233.91 per litre. PMLN Vice President Mariam Nawaz said on Twitter that Party Supremo Nawaz Sharif has strongly opposed the decision, while PPP co-chairman Asif Ali Zardari criticized the move despite decline in international oil prices. Smile said he has saved the country from defaulting and is working to the best of his ability. In a press conference, he stated that another rupees 10 per litre would be levied from September 1 to meet conditions by International Monetary Fund for a bailout package. I am standing behind all of this government and I am completely honest and I own it. And the decision of the day was a very effective decision. And the right decision was that the supply will not break, the company will not break, the executive board of IMF is scheduled to meet later this month for considering Pakistan's request to approve and release a tranche of $1.17 billion under the extended fund facility. The country's reserves have dropped to dangerous levels of $8.5 billion, US dollars, covering less than two months of imports. Moving on. Baluchistan has been badly hit by floods and torrential rainfall that has been exceptionally heavy this year. Several flood-affected families in the region have been awaiting relief, lamenting they have not received the much-needed aid material and funds from the local authorities and the Pakistan government. Families affected by floods and torrential rains in Balochistan have been awaiting relief, lamenting they have not got much-needed aid material and funds from local authorities and the Pakistan government. Several areas of Balochistan have continued to reel from incessant rainfall, with debt toll rising to 200 this week, while the calamity has damaged homes, agricultural land and public infrastructure. A local resident said they have only received assurances, but no funding to rebuild their homes. Yeah, 
अभी अफ्ताह हो गया कुछ नहीं तो ये सामान जो आ रहा है पीडीएम में एक दूसरे वो आप नहीं नहीं, नहीं नहीं जो बड़े बड़े लोग लेते हैं वो अपने लोगों को देते हैं गरीब को कोई किसी नहीं देता The authorities have said relief operations had been slowed down by the severe weather conditions. Balochistan, which borders Iran and Afghanistan, has received 300 percent more rain than the annual average. The National Disaster Management Authority said this month. In news from Afghanistan, one year into Taliban rule following the chaotic withdrawal by the United States and its allies, Afghanistan faces widespread hunger. poverty amid worsening humanitarian crisis women's rights have been curtailed and work and education is still heavily restricted international organizations have urged the taliban must change course uphold rights of girls and women afghans continue to struggle with rising poverty drought malnutrition and fading hope among women that they will have a decisive role in afghanistan's future one year since the taliban took power in kabul women's work and education is still heavily restricted civil society and independent media have also shrunk with many of its members leaving the country several international organizations including the european union and united nations assistance mission in afghanistan unama have once again reiterated their support for afghan women and girls Joseph Borrell Fontelas, High Representative of the EU for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, in his Twitter post urged the Taliban to change tack and uphold the rights of women, girls, and minorities. Bilal Karimi, Deputy Spokesman of the Islamic Emirate, has, however, said that significant steps have been taken to ensure human rights in Afghanistan, and there is no problem in this regard. Unama urged the Taliban to reflect. A window of opportunity remains to take necessary steps to lift Afghanistan and give hope to its people. Without change, things can worsen. It said on Twitter, adding that the international community will engage with those that respect the rights and are representative of all Afghans. Meanwhile, there are huge pressures on the economy, caused in large part by the country's isolation as foreign governments refuse to recognize its rulers. Development aid upon which the country relied so heavily has been cut as the international community demands that the Taliban respect the rights of Afghans. In news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's state of emergency imposed to control anti-government protests last month will not be extended beyond this week, President Ranil Wickremesinghe said on Tuesday as protests against the country's economic devastation petered out. Sri Lankan President Ranil Wickremesinghe's media office said on Tuesday that country's state of emergency imposed in the middle of last month will not be extended beyond this week as protests against the country's economic devastation petered out. Lawmakers voted Wickremesinghe in as president on July 20 after his predecessor Gotabaya Rajapaksa fled a popular uprising against months of acute shortages of fuel, food and medicine. Six-time Prime Minister Wickremesinghe imposed the emergency from July 18 when he was acting president after tens of thousands of people stormed into government buildings seeking solutions to the country's worst economic crisis in more than seven decades. Wickremesinghe's office cited the president as saying at an event in the main city of Colombo that the emergency would lapse this week. He has sought peace and political support to help advance bailout talks with the International Monetary Fund (IMF). The country has already defaulted on its sovereign debt. Sri Lanka is considering restructuring its local and foreign debt in the hope of securing a 3 billion US dollar IMF loan. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights Michelle Bachelet visited a Rohingya refugees camp on Tuesday. As part of a four-day visit to Bangladesh, Bachelet is the first UN human rights chief to make an official trip to the country. She was shown around the camps in Cox's Bazar by officials and also visited a food market for Rohingya refugees who had fled Myanmar. Bachelet met with a host of officials, civil society representatives and Rohingya refugees as well as women and youth groups who shared with her their concerns and hopes. More than 730,000 Rohingya Muslims fled Rakhine state in August 2017 after a military crackdown that refugees said included mass killings and rape. 
Close to a million Rohingya have been living in crowded, sometimes squalid camps in southern Bangladesh that comprise the world's largest refugee settlement. Myanmar is facing charges of genocide at the International Court of Justice over the crackdown. Myanmar denies genocide and says its armed forces were conducting legitimate operations against militants who attacked police posts. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.